Hey guys, welcome to another episode of our weekly podcast at the end of the day. My name is Deepika Shrestha. And I am Anuj Thapa. And with us today is Sarina Pravasi, the CEO of WaterAid America. Talking a little about Sarina, she is originally from Nepal. She is a mother of two small children. She finished her high school in Nepal. She did her BA in economics from Smith College, Northampton, Massachusetts. And she did her Masters of Science in Development Studies. So today, we want to talk to Serena about her journey in the international development profession and some of the key advice that she would like to give to the new generations who went who want to make a career in international development and are in the US. For those who do not know what WaterAid is, what is WaterAid? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. WaterAid is a global organization that focuses on uh, domestic clean drinking water, mm -hmm. sanitation, hygiene, those are the things that are the basic foundations of life without which you can't have uh, well-being, health. Uh, it's the first step of mm -hmm. getting out of poverty. So that's what we focus on. Right. And uh, what do you normally do in your office? As a CEO. <laughs> As the CEO. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I love about my job is that it can be very different. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no... Um, sort of set routine day. Okay. So I could have a day where um, I'm doing a lot of meetings with external stakeholders. Mm -hmm. I could be meeting with uh, you know, donors or board members, or mm -hmm. I could be very lucky and be actually in one of the countries where we are doing the work. So um, mo most recently I was in Colombia, mm -hmm. where uh, you know, I, I have the privilege of meeting with the communities that we're helping and understanding with them how the water and sanitation um, situation is going. Um, yeah, so I, I sometimes I'm meeting with our team members right. and uh, helping them. So I, I get I have a lot of variety in my day, which I enjoy. How, where did you start your career? In what role? My professional career in international development, I would say I started with an internship, like okay. most people do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, an internship in Washington, D.C. I had just uh, graduated from college. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next. And uh, I had an internship with an organization called Action Against Hunger. Um, that was the very beginning. Mm -hmm. My first actual job was I was the bus monitor mm -hmm. at, in my school bus. <laughs> and my job was to make sure that all the kids didn't put their hands outside of the windows <laughs> and that they behaved and that everybody listened to the bus driver. <laughs> and that was my first uh, job that I got paid for. Right. And talk about that internship. Was it paid, unpaid? How was that? It, it had a modest stipend. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I could call it paid, Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I did get something. Mm -hmm. It helped me with maybe my transportation and maybe a little bit of uh, food allowance. At the time, I lived uh, in Washington, D.C. in a house that I shared with five roommates. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, now I look back on it, it was like one of the best times of life. But at that time, maybe I would have, you know, wanted <laughs> something different for myself. <laughs> but, um, but that was the beginning. And it was like how many, many people uh, in this profession start. They start with uh, an internship with, you know, sometimes paid, sometimes not paid. Um, and uh, a lot of it was learning by doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you study something, but in particularly in this line of work, I feel like you study and that gives you a theoretical basis, mm -hmm. but a lot of the job you, you learn on the job and you learn from other people who are kind enough to uh, teach you or take you with them or you know just take you under their wing and you, you learn along the way. Which job has given you the best experience so far of getting that opportunity to learn and grow in the job? So after my internship, right. my first uh, job that I actually got paid for mm -hmm. was I was the program assistant mm -hmm. in an organization called PACT. Okay. And I stayed there for about eight years mm -hmm. and I had many different roles. Mm -hmm. um, and I found it was a really good place for me to grow, mm -hmm. mainly because there were people there that really took an interest in me um, that felt that I had some talent, that I could contribute something. And uh, I remember one of my first bosses there, she, um, she gave me the opportunity to travel with her to do a program evaluation mm -hmm. in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. That was my first trip to Ethiopia, which later I, I went back many times. But that was a really formative thing. So I got to do it with her. So I learned that skill mm -hmm. um, and then was able to do that on my own uh, many times mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, it was really key that there were people in the organization that 
you know, took an interest and uh-huh. they, they took the time uh, and they were interested in my professional development too. So I didn't feel like it was only me uh-huh. that had to worry about that. Right. So Serena, when you started your internship, what, what year was that? It was 1996. 1996 and this is 2018. Uh Is there a reason why you're sticking to, I mean, (laughs) internship? What is it? Nothing, because I also started my career with an internship, but modest, modest stipend. And I know Anuz has done so many unpaid internships. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody goes through that. He still has the hangover because it's very recent. (laughs) Okay, the, the reason why I'm asking you that is, you started your career as an as a modest intern, and now you are a CEO of one of the you know uh, one of the highly noted uh, nonprofit organization, What Aid America. Uh, so it's a long journey. So if you had to you know uh, look back, were there any shortcut ways ways to reach here? Because <laughs> our generation is always you, uh, looking for looking for a quick, quick success. You know, I want to be a CEO <laughs> of that company in five years. So if you had to do it differently. You have to enjoy the time along the way. Mm-hmm. If if your focus is only on, I want to be the CEO, okay. then I think I would have missed a lot in okay. my career. And I probably would not have enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure that there... I mean, honestly, I really don't think that... Um, it's good to have goals, right? It's good to have ambition. It's good mm-hmm. to have goals. But I'm not sure that that goal or ambition um, tied to a certain title Mm -hmm. is going to make for a very happy career Mm -hmm. because uh, then you reach it then what then what Mm -hmm. then what are you going to do right so Mm -hmm. for me what's been more important is really um, having had roles that are fulfilling and interesting Mm -hmm. that i felt that i was learning that i had something to contribute um, and I feel that about my current role as CEO, but I also feel that about many of my previous roles mm-hmm. that didn't have the CEO title. Right. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's something, you know, I think it's, it's natural. Um, it's natural, I think, in your career, especially when you're starting off, um, to be impatient, to, mm-hmm. to, to be in a hurry. It's probably a good thing. Yeah, that's right? what it's I a, want to focus it's a, on. Yeah. It's, a, it's a better thing than to say, oh, you know, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But... What is that hurry for? I think it's really important to be clear. Is mm-hmm. it a title? Is it what's the thing that you're after? For me, at one point in my career, the most important thing was to get international experience. I wanted to live mm-hmm. in different countries, in different cultures. I wanted, I wanted that experience. Mm-hmm. And I remember feeling like very um, driven mm-hmm. towards that goal. Now, because our podcast is more of focused uh, for newly arriving immigrants in the U.S., now there are so many people so many young people who come with required academic qualification as well as numbers of years of experience and then they want to make a career in the same profession in the US but they are new and they are lost they do not know who to ask for so for people like them what would you suggest how to begin so I would say two things they sound a little bit contradictory okay but, (laughs) but I think one is not to underestimate the skills and the experience that you come with so just because that experience was in a different country, uh, under a different system, doesn't mean that it doesn't count. It counts. So definitely not to underestimate that or not to view it as something less. But at the same time, uh, coming to a new place, sometimes you know you have to do what it takes to get your foot in the door. Right. So that might be an internship, that mm-hmm. might be volunteering, or that might be taking a position that you feel is something that you know, you're know you already beyond in your home country. Right. Um, I think one of the most important things in the US particularly is there's a huge um, value to networking and meeting people. And that's probably true in every country, but yeah. here, I feel there are opportunities, you know, if you do your research, if you know, if you're sort of focused about what your goals are, if you do your research, there are a lot of, you know, free lectures, talks, Mm -hmm. um, events, workshops, where you can talk to people in the profession that you want to pursue. And many of those things are free. Mm -hmm. Some of them, there might be a a fee, but there might be some free events alongside. Um, In New York, I feel like almost like there's too much to mm-hmm. keep up with. Right. So some, it might feel overwhelming, but really focusing in on the, the types of people that are in the 
field and mm-hmm. in the profession that you want to be in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found that, you know, people generally tend to be very open and uh, they'll have a conversation or they'll have a coffee with you. Mm-hmm. Um, they may not be able to, you know, offer you a job right, right then. Right. But I think one of the things when you move from a home country to a, a new place is that building that network is so important. Just the personal friends and, uh, you know, sort of emotional support network, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but also a professional network. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would really encourage people to take all those opportunities to to show up for events, to find out what's going on in your city or in your part of uh, the country. Um, There are associations, Mm -hmm. so many, so many different networks. And Serena, if you look at the current job market, especially in the international development field in the U.S., what kind of major skills one should have so that they can make a mark? Within international development, there's more and more specialization. Mm -hmm. So uh, depending on if your interests are in education or health or or if you're more of a generalist, then project management and just management skills are really important. That can be Mm cross-cutting. But if you have a particular area that you're more interested in, then I think the difference now is that it's probably much more specialized Mm -hmm. than when I was starting my career. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's a public health background, then you would need to have experience in public health or or academic credentials in that area. Or if it's um, like in our case, you know, in water aid, a lot of it is um, in the U.S., in a lot of the nonprofits, it's fundraising skills. It might not even be related to the the mission of the organization, but depending mm-hmm. on the role. So I think um, a lot of times when I talk to people, they are interested in international development or having a career in international affairs. Mm-hmm. But maybe they haven't thought through exactly what what are the what part of that mm-hmm. large area do they want to focus on, or what are their really interests, or what do they feel that they are good at. Um, so, you know, they're just very different skill sets. Like if you're a fundraiser, mm-hmm. um, maybe you had even like a private sector experience in sales could be quite helpful in fundraising yeah. or, you know, if it's general management. Um, but yeah, I guess there are a lot of different types of roles mm-hmm. um, and there's room for a lot of different types of skills. One last question, Salai. Yeah, yeah, okay. go ahead. <laughs> uh, you are a mother of two. Yes. And mm. your job comprises of a lot of traveling. How are you handling this? Kids and career. So this is a good, you know, it's an interesting question mm-hmm. because part of me um, thinks that I shouldn't answer that question mm-hmm. because I don't know how many men who have small children mm-hmm. get asked that question. Yeah. Oh, right. What kind of question am I asking? <laughs> right. No, no, yeah. it's true. People ask that all the time. Yeah. But you would only ask that question to a mom, right? Normally, you don't ask that question to a dad. Totally agreed, totally yeah. agreed. Um, but I'm going to answer it because okay. I'm, I'm being nice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then the answer is because there's a very involved dad okay. in the picture. Mm-hmm. And that makes that possible in our family. And I think everybody has a different answer and a mm-hmm. different way of making it work. Mm-hmm. But yeah, lots of different things make it possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'll be asking the same question if I have to interview any father. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Please. Thank you so much. Thank you. For your time. And that was a very, very encouraging conversation. We're yeah. so Thank glad you. to have you in our Thank podcast. Thank you so much, Serena. Thank you very much. <laughs> so until we catch you next, you stay safe, keep working hard. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey guys, a quick note. If you have a personal story that you think might be helpful to the newly arriving immigrants in the U.S., please contact us. We would love to feature you in our podcast. Go to our website, podcast at the end of the day dot com and write to us by going to the feedback section. And by the way, if you love this podcast, you can support us with a small donation. Your help will enable us to continue producing more episodes. The link to support our podcast is in the description below.